A common question that people ask is, should a new pilot start on 3S batteries or 4S batteries? And the common answer is that a new pilot should definitely start on 3S because if a new pilot starts on 4S, it's going to be too much power for them to handle. They're going to raise the throttle. They're going to shoot to the moon. They're going to crash into a wall, destroy their copter, lose their copter. It's just too much. And there's something to that. New pilots definitely are not usually able to handle the power of 4S uh, voltage. Uh, they, they just don't have the subtlety on the throttle to manage their altitude very well. But here's the flip side of that. I've seen a lot of pilots start flying and they're, they're total noobs. They buy 3S batteries and in about two or three months of, of practicing, they've gotten good enough. They're ready to go to 4S. 4S isn't that much of a difference but from 3S. I mean, it's there, but it's only like 25% more power. It's not like it's three times as much power. So they're ready to go to 4S, but they've got all these batteries, and sometimes they spent $200 on 3S batteries that are basically useless now. So I think a new pilot should start on 4S, if only because there's a good chance that if you really get into the hobby, you're probably going to be ready to go to 4S before you have really totally worn out your 3S batteries, and then you've just wasted your money. But what about that problem with flying your quadcopter into the wall, not being able to manage your throttle? I'm going to give you the answer to that. And here's the answer to that. What you do is you go into your radio, and this is a Tyrannus, of course it is, uh, but every radio should have the ability to adjust the endpoints on the channel. And you go to your throttle channel. Now, normally, you're supposed to adjust your throttle channel and all your channels in clean flight, so they go from 1,000 to 2,000, right? And that's what I've done here, 1,000 to 2,000. Oh, 1,001. Oh, man. There, there we go. What you can do is you just take your top endpoint and you bump it down. So let me put my throttle all the way up. I'm going to take my endpoint and I'm just going to knock 25% off of it or, or something. Let's just take it down to 1750. You see? And now what I've done is I've taken my throttle channel and I've just knocked off the top 25% of it. And the whole throttle channel will now rescale. Check out the throttle channel there. We go from minus 100 to plus 50. You see, I haven't lost anything off the top of the actual stick travel. I've still got my full stick travel. I've just knocked off the top 25% of the throttle channel. And this is a very interesting thing. What it means is that you've essentially turned your 4S battery into a 3S battery, kind of. Not really, actually, because the copter will still the flight controller will still have full access to the 4S power for the purposes of turning the copter and stabilizing the copter, but for you managing the throttle so you don't shoot to the moon, you have essentially a 3S setup. There's a problem with the technique that I just showed you of reducing the upper endpoint. And the problem is, so here you can see I've scaled down the top of the throttle channel to 75%, just like I showed you. And let's take a look at how the throttle channel moves here in the channel monitor. So watch the throttle here. The throttle is all the way down, and I'm going to raise the throttle to 50%. And notice that the throttle channel is at 50%. And then as I raise above 50%, notice that now we only go up to 75%. So we haven't actually taken the whole throttle channel and scaled it down. What we've done is we've sort of chopped off the top of the throttle channel, and we've scaled down the top of the throttle channel, but we haven't scaled the midpoint down at all. And the reason for that is that when you change the endpoints on, on an RC radio, the assumption is that what you're doing is you're changing the, the endpoints of a servo's travel. You know, we all fly multi-rotors, and so we don't tend to think about servos, but the, the servos is where this comes from. You change the endpoint, and you change how far the servo goes. So you change how far your elevator or your rudder or your aileron moves. And when you change the endpoints of a servo's travel, you don't want to change the point at which the servo centers. So lowering or raising the endpoints is not going to change the center point. And here on the throttle, that's exactly what we don't want. We don't want that. We want to change the midpoint as well and scale the whole curve down. Because what you've got now is below 50% throttle, you have exactly as much resolution and power and etc. as you did before. So if you're a beginner who can't, you're, let's say your copter hovers at 40%, well, you, you, you've taken off the top end, but you're still going to have just as much trouble hovering at 40% as you would have. You, ha you haven't really reduced the, the copter's uh, power if you're below mid-throttle. If you're above mid-throttle, well, you're probably not going to be there anyway as a beginner. So you've prevented this full-throttle flyaway, but that wasn't going to happen anyway. 
So what's the workaround? Well, I'm going to show you. This being the Tyrannus, there are several different ways to accomplish this. The Tyrannus is very, very, uh, very, very capable of doing the same thing six different ways. One of the ways to do it is to go into the input screen. We're going to go to the throttle channel, and we're going to adjust the throttle curve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the weight down. Let's say we take the weight down to 75%. You can change the value, but we'll take it down to 75%. And you'll notice as I did that, that both the bottom and the top end of the throttle's uh, range moved, which is not what we want. If, the, if we were to work with this curve, we could never actually get the throttle to zero. We could never arm the copter because the throttle would never be at zero. See, right now the throttle's at negative 74. I move the stick up, it goes to positive 74. But that's not what I want. I want from zero to some other value. And I can accomplish that by changing the offset. So now I'm going to reduce the offset and bring this down to minus 100. So actually, it should be probably 25. This, it should be the difference between this and 100 should be how much offset you need. So now I've got the offset at minus 25 and the weight at 75. So the bottom of the throttle is now, you can see it's at negative 100, essentially. And as I raise it, now it's at 50% plus 50%. So now I have, in fact, chopped off the top 25% of the throttle's range. And notice that the center of the throttle's travel now no longer passes through the center here. But it, 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 we've just got a linear throttle curve, but we've reduced it all. We've got the bottom still at zero, and the top is lower, and everything is linear in between. And that's how you would do it. That's how I would do this if I really wanted to do this uh, for a beginner. Adjusting the, the top endpoint will not work for the reason that I told you. And you can, of course, tweak this if you want a little less power. You can drop this down. But notice now that as we do that, we're changing this bottom, this number here. So with the throttle all the way down, I can now just go back to the offset and tweak the offset down until it reaches negative 100, essentially. Uh, and then, again, I've got just a, a, a lower throttle curve. This is what you want as a beginner. If you have a copter that is overpowered, this is going to protect you and make it easier for you to do what you need to do. Your hover point is now going to be higher on the throttle, and you're just going to have less power overall. So I think this is a really great trick to allow a new pilot to not waste money buying batteries that he or she is very likely to outgrow before they wear out. So you you can buy 4S batteries, and you can still safely uh, fly the copter without having an excess of power. Hope you liked that tip. Hope it was educational. As always, happy flying.